Welcome back to our online uh, lesson. We are now uh, on our new uh, session and uh, we will cover the topic on change in equilibrium condition. So uh, we already have uh, discussed about market equilibrium and last time we have uh, emphasized that the market equilibrium is graphically represented by the point of intersection between the demand curve and the supply curve and the corresponding price of that equilibrium point is the price equilibrium the corresponding quantity is the quantity equilibrium so because after a period of time there could be some change in demand or change in supply the equilibrium point can be altered so there will be a new equilibrium point and that when we are moving from one equilibrium point to another equilibrium point then we are referring it to the change in equilibrium condition so let us now uh, get to the basic concept of change in equilibrium condition so we have to remember the, the this four um, fundamental uh, statement of relationships the first quantity or rather change in demand and quantity equilibrium are directly related second change in demand and price equilibrium are directly related also third change in supply and quantity equilibrium are directly related and the fourth change in supply and price equilibrium are inversely related so take note that there's only one among these four that is of inverse relationship that is between the change in supply and price equilibrium what does it mean because of the increase in supply price equilibrium is expected to decrease or because of the decrease in supply prices price equilibrium is expected to increase so this is the kind of relationship we can observe between the change in supply and price equilibrium because they are inversely related while for the change in demand and quantity equilibrium for example since they are directly related so if there is increase in demand there will be corresponding increase in quantity equilibrium also and that is how the other elements are to be stated when a direct relationship is, obs is observed now let us move to uh, the next slide in this uh, next slide okay uh, what we have is uh, a problem that uh, gives us an idea that the supply curve is assumed constant while there is a change in demand see it is only the demand that is shifting and specifically the shift in demand illustrated in this particular um, example is a shift to the right which we refer to an increase in demand so let us uh, uh, consider this problem statement i will read the original demand and supply equations are QD equal to 72.5 minus 12.5P 
and QS is equal to negative 25 plus 15P respectively. Solve for the new price and quantity equilibrium given that an increase in demand by 17.5 units occurred after a period of time. So here, there is a stated increase in demand by 17.5. Last time, we have already covered the topic on what are those that would cause the change in demand. So in this particular problem, it was not specified as to what has caused the change in demand. What was what is stated here is that because of the change in demand, there is now uh, a change in demand by a particular amount. And specifically in this problem, a change in demand is a decrease in demand by 17.5. So how are we going to interpret this in our equation? So let us um, uh, start from stating our demand equation. Our original demand equation is QD1 equal to 72.5 minus 12.5 P. Now in order for us to uh, derive our new demand curve, which is QD sub 2, we have to use our original demand curve or the original demand equation, which is QD sub 1, and add from it the amount of change in demand. So because we have a, an increase in demand by 17.5, so the change in demand is 17.5. So if the 17.5 is added to the original demand equation, then what we can have is the new demand equation, which is QD sub 2. So QD sub 2 is equal to QD sub 1 plus 17.5. Therefore, QD sub 2 is equal now to 72.5 minus 12.5 P, which is the equation of QD sub 1, plus the change in demand or the increase in demand by 17.5. So simplifying, we now have QD sub 2 is equal to 90 minus 12.5 P. Now, because there is no change in supply, change in supply is assumed or rather, supply is assumed constant. So there is no stated change in supply. So whatever is uh, the original supply curve, that will also be the new supply curve. So QS sub 1 is equal to QS sub 2. They are just the same. That is to say that the supply is constant. So graphically, we have here a shift in the demand curve to the right. It was from QD sub 1 to now QD sub 2. And our QD sub 1 is given the equation of 72.5 minus 12.5p, while QD sub 2 is equal to 90 minus 12.5p. So obviously, um, the shift of the demand curve is directed to the right. While there is no change in supply. So observe here that there are intersection of points and we have intersection point between demand and supply the new demand curve and the new supply curve and we also have intersection point between the original demand curve and the original supply curve so we can now derive the value of price equilibrium or the original price equilibrium if we equate the original supply equation to the original demand equation. So that is QS sub 1 is equal to QD sub 1. So QS sub 1 is given by the equation minus 12, 25 plus 15P and QD sub 1 is given by the equation 
72.5 minus 12.5p. By equating them, we now have minus 25 plus 15p is equal to 72.5 minus 12.5p. So that by bringing all those terms with p to the right side of the equality sign and the whole number to the, uh, the, the those terms with p, bringing them to the left side of the equality sign and those whole numbers to be uh, uh, brought to uh, the right side of the equality sign, then we have here 15p plus 12.5p is equal to 72.5 plus 25. And simplifying, we can now have 27.5p is equal to 97.5. The 97.5 is just uh, the sum of 72.5 plus 25. And that 27.5p is simply just the sum of 15p and 12.5p. So 27.5p is equal to 97.5. Now, to solve for the unknown variable p, we can transpose the coefficient of p, which is 27.5, to the other side. And this can become a divisor if transposed to the other side. So that p now is equal to 97.5 divided by 27.5. And the quotient of P will become 3.54, which is now the value of price equilibrium. So this is our new price equilibrium because it is the P between the, rather this is the original price equilibrium because this is the uh, P uh, between the, uh, in, rather, in equating uh, the original supply equation and the uh, original demand equation. So our original price equilibrium now is 3.54. Now, how about the new price equilibrium? The new price equilibrium uh, can be solved by equating the new supply equation to the new demand equation. But because the there is no uh, shift in supply, meaning the supply is constant. So whatever is the new or original supply equation, that will also be the new supply equation. So we can now um, equate QS to QD sub 2. And so QS is given by 25 plus 15P, which is now equal to 90.12.5P. So bringing again those uh, terms with p to the left side of the equality sign we have and those whole number to be uh, brought to the right side of the equality sign so we have 15p plus 12.5p is equal to 90 plus 25 and uh, solving for p we can now have um, P is equal to 115 divided by 2, 27.5. Take note that the 27.5 is a transposed value uh, from the left side of the equality sign. And so now P is given a quotient of 4.18 and this serves as our new equilibrium condition.